Linda Lee Cadwell, and I welcome you to this special Laserdisc edition of Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. The film you're about to see is the story of a real human being, a struggling person, a loving person, with a great many levels to his character. When I first spoke to Rob Cohen, the director and co-writer of Dragon, about making a motion picture of my husband's life, I told him that I wanted people to know about Bruce Lee, the man, not just the powerful martial artist, but also the loving husband and father, the philosopher and the teacher. Rob's creation is the story of that man. Even before Bruce Lee was a role model to millions of young people, he was a role model to his own children. Before he was a heroic image to people all over the world, he was a hero in our own lives. Dragon will give you insight into Bruce Lee, the man who became a hero. As you'll see from watching Dragon, Bruce had a tremendous energy. In fact, as a child, he was called Mo Sitong, Chinese for never sit still. This energy fired the creative essence of his entire being. He had the remarkable capability of channeling this energy, focusing it, disciplining it to serve his goals. This high intensity energy is also the essence of this film. Bruce could be funny and lighthearted. I've never laughed so much in my life as I did when I was with him. And he could be tender and kind. He had so much to give in his life, and he gave it all. A life need not be measured in numbers of years, but by the contributions of the individual. By this measure, Bruce was a sage. St. Augustine once said, the key to immortality is first living a life worth remembering. There was also a much deeper side to Bruce's personality that Dragon tells especially well and that is his philosophical side. Immersed in the Eastern and Western philosophies, Bruce was a great and deep thinker, always contemplating life and the meaning of his own existence. Through study and intuition, he had an inner awareness of his own potential and he strove constantly to fulfill it. He was a student, a teacher, and an artist. To him, the discipline of martial arts was not just a means to fight better, it was a way to live better through the perfection of his mind and body. By increasing his powers of awareness through self-knowledge, Bruce was constantly fine-tuning his inner perceptions and their relationship to things going on around him. Through his own process of self-evaluation, he evolved his own way of martial arts, which he called Jeet Kune Do. When he was offered the chance to make films, Bruce saw an opportunity to show his beloved Chinese culture and his special art to millions, and as usual, he focused all of his energy on it. Here was a chance to communicate to people how he felt about the martial arts and to show his way of living it and to show the world the unique power and beauty of Asian culture. The world of the motion picture became the best classroom for the teachings of the little dragon, Lei Siulong. With his new ambition, though, came new boundaries, mostly in the negative ways that Asians were depicted in film and television. Bruce wasn't a person who recognized barriers of any sort, either in filmmaking or martial arts. He wouldn't be a party to the stereotypes of the time. In tearing down the barriers of fear and prejudice that were so firmly entrenched in Western filmmaking, Bruce opened the door for people of all races, cultures, and disabilities to fulfill their potentials. Bruce's work crossed the boundaries of film and martial arts and showed people in all walks of life that they could realize their dreams. If somebody told Bruce he couldn't do something, he would not accept it without exploring and examining it. While he had great respect for tradition, he was not a slave to it. And if he saw a better way, he was faithful to the integrity of his opinions. He ruffled some feathers, but he also changed a lot of attitudes. And he definitely changed the way martial arts and Asian culture are perceived. 
Now, 20 years after he left us, he's still changing people's attitudes. This is what the film Dragon does so well. It does not show Bruce Lee a Chinese man, or Bruce Lee a fighting man, or Bruce Lee a family man. It is all of these and none of these. Dragon is about Bruce Lee, a real human being. I'm often asked to speculate on what Bruce would be doing now if he were still here. I think it's safe to say that he would still be involved in film. He loved film, and it was his passion to share his philosophy with the whole world through a medium that could entertain as well as inform. He would probably have continued to write and produce his own pictures and to create opportunities for others to create their own special kind of art. And Bruce, I am sure, would have loved Dragon. Rob Cohen has done justice to the man. And as for Jason Scott Lee, I almost feel that it was worth waiting for all this time for Jason to grow up and be old enough to play Bruce. I sincerely hope you enjoy Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Watch it with the knowledge that you are indeed witnessing the true humor, wisdom, and yes, the power of the man I knew.